Welcome everybody to the second part of this webinar series about, about the stress envelope for fiberglass piping. In part one, we look to the concept of the stress envelope. What is it and what do you use it for? And in this part two, we will look to how you construct this envelope. So how do you use material data from testing and what tests are done to uh, get data points to build your stress envelope? As a small recap of the concept of the stress envelope, it is uh, plotted in a 2D graph, where on the horizontal axis we have the hoop stress, and on the vertical axis we have the axial stress. And then we, uh, well, if we compute uh, a point in our pipe, uh, we, we compute a hoop stress. A uh, hoop is a, um, another word for circumferential stress and actual stress, well, longitudinal direction of the pipe. If we compute the stress point, it, it has a certain hoop stress and actual stress, and we can plot the point, for example, here. here. And then we get the, the stress envelope concept. It's, it's shown by the blue lines, as we see here. And if our computer stress in the pipe, if it is within this envelope, it is okay. It is uh, allowed by the design uh, standard that we use, ISO 14692. If the computed point is, uh, for example, here, outside the stress envelope, then we overstress our pipe. And we've seen in the part one of the webinar that the strength of your pipe, so illustrated by the blue stress envelope, it's dependent on the load condition. So if we have uh, only, for example, actual stress and no hoop stress. The, the strength of the pipe is not so high. But if we have a combination, for example, of hoop stress that is twice the actual stress, then we are on this line. Yeah, it's uh, tilted toward hoop stress, the, the two to one load condition line. If we load our pipe conform uh, that line, then we see that we have a much higher strength. Yeah, the, the actual strength is uh, much higher. And that is because in the two to one load condition, it depends on the pipe design, but most pipes are designed that the fibers are aligned with uh, stresses in this direction. So we have um, five corner points, one, two, three, four, and five. And they are for different load conditions. So corner point one, it is the corner point for uh, strength of the pipe under pressure load. So if we pressurize the pipe, uh, the hoop stress is twice the actual stress, and that we denote in this way. Hoop to actual stress is two to one. Uh, so that, as every pipe engineer knows, is the load condition when we pressurize a pipe. And then uh, for this condition, we have a hoop stress and an actual stress, and that we denote like this. S is the allowable, H denotes uh, hoop strength, A denotes actual strength, and what we see here is the load condition, so the ratio of hoop and actual stress. We've also discussed it in more detail in part one of the webinar series. Then we have uh, point corner point number two. Again, we have a hoop and an actual uh, allowable uh, stress, but this one is under a one-to-one -one load, so here we have equal one, uh, sorry, equal hoop and actual load. Then we have corner point three. It's on the vertical axis. So this uh, corner point corresponding with only actual load in the tensile direction. Then we have uh, point number four. Again, it's pure actual loading, but in this case, uh, the load is compressive. And again, the, the, hoop, uh, the hoop load is zero. Um, and then we have the last corner point, and in this case we only have uh, hoop stress and zero actual stress. So this gives us the strength of the pipe in the pure hoop load. Um, now then we will look to, for all these five points, what are the corresponding material tests or, or formulas to find these points. Uh, for corner point number one, uh, we need to do the most elaborate testing, or uh, of course, in reality, it's the 
pipe manufacturer who is doing this testing. Uh, corner point one is found by what is called regression testing. This uh, stress envelope is uh, obviously for the design life of your pipe, and that is normally 20 years. Uh, yeah, no, most systems you design for 20 years. So, and because fiberglass has a different short-term strength and uh, long-term strength, if you load it for a long duration, the strength is lower compared to uh, loads that are for a short duration. It can be a factor two. So the, the short-term strength is twice uh, the, the long-term strength. So we need to, to find the long-term strength. And this is done by, as I said, regression testing. And for this regression testing, you take uh, 20 pipe samples and each pipe sample uh, each pipe sample is for the same pipe uh, with the same uh, design and the same wall thickness and on the each pipe uh, sample we put end caps and then we pressurize it um, uh, we of course we pressurize it we want because we want to have the two to one load condition which we get by pressurizing the pipe uh, twice uh, the, the hoop stress is then twice the actual stress and what we do is that we uh, these pipe samples we pressure to various uh, pressure levels and then because the strength is time time dependent for each uh, pressure test for different pressures we also get different times to failure and if we see this graph here on the vertical axis we have uh, pressure so the, the test pressure and on the horizontal axis we have time so that is the time to failure and for each test result we have uh, well, the test pressure and the time to failure and we plot it so each test results in one point uh, so some hi with higher pressures and a longer uh, sorry a shorter time to failure here this point is vice versa and when we have these 20 test points, then we uh, draw a line through it. It's a re regression line. Um, and it's kind of an average of all the points that we see here. And if now we extrapolate this line to all the way to here, to this point, this point is, um, well, corresponds with this number of hours and that corresponds with 20 years. Uh, 20 years is 175,400 uh, hours. So on this line, if you read the, the pressure here uh, for this time to failure, then we have the allowable pressure for uh, 20 years design life. Um, and then, of course, when we have the allowable pressure, then we can easily convert it with the Kettle formulas or Barlow formulas as they're also called and then we find the the allowable stresses and that uh, we see here so from the pressure we compute the hoop stress and the actual stress and that results in this point and that uh, forms the first point of our stress envelope so this is the the pressure uh, where the pipe will fill after 20 years design life of course in the stress analysis that we that we will look to um, in part three of the webinar series we will apply a safety factor but what we uh, plot now the stress envelope that's the failure uh, stress for 20 years of design life and now we have a good result we have point one and then we go to point two uh, so point two is for a one-to-one -one load condition so that means that the hoop stress and the actual stress is equal. Uh, so we have a different load condition and then yeah, the, the actual stress, uh, so the actual strength will be different. Um, and while I say that it's a one-to-one -one load condition, in reality, the design code ISO 14692, it allows to vary this uh, rate. So you can also test for even a relatively uh, lower hoop stress. But to keep it simple, let's say we we look to the 1.1 point. .1 point. Um, now, so this uh, this load condition that is not easily achieved, but you can achieve it with this test equipment. Here we see uh, with yellow uh, a pipe, and it has two end caps. Now, in this case, from uh, from steel, that can be. 
He has the, the second end cap. Um, and inside the pipe, we put a pressure P1 that, that yeah, so far everything is uh, normal. And that's how we always uh, do the pressure test. But the difference is now that uh, we put a plunger in the pipe. And this plunger here, it uh, seals uh, this area from the remaining area of the pipe. So the, here we have uh, a gasket. So, and this plunger, it connects to the end cap here. So, and what we will do is that we apply a different additional pressure uh, P2. Uh, so we could keep it uh, pressureless here, uh, but we can also apply pressure P2 and that creates an additional actual uh, load on the pipe. Huh? So if you pressurize here, we have a load on the plunger and that will put a force um, here on this end cap and then a tensile force on the pipe and then of course the, at the other end cap um, you have the same tensile force so it creates additional tensile force and by varying the pressure P1 and P2 we can get uh, different ratios of the hoop stress and the actual stress and we now look to a load condition one to one although we can also uh, Test for different points. Um, yeah, well, and that that is basically the test. Uh, and this test is uh, again a long-term test. It's performed for one thousand hours. Uh, so we get the from this test the strength and the one-to-one -one load condition, and for a duration of one thousand hours. And then, of course, you you could say, okay, but we need the the strength not for 1,000 hours, but for the design life, 20 years, and that we do by um, by going back to the regression test where we test for different load durations. Uh, so this test, and um, if you have the test result for 1,000 hours somewhere here, this line it gives us the ratio of strength uh, for 1000 hours and 20 years uh, so the ratio is smaller than one uh, 20 years we have a lower strength than for 1000 hours and this ratio for this test under a two to one load condition it's also applied for this one to one load condition uh, it's of course not 100 percent proof on that the same uh, regression ratio applies to this different load condition, but yeah, it's reasonable to assume it is at least uh, close to it. So this we will use. And this is uh, what the design standard ISO 14692 uses. Um, so that's how we get the second point. And you might think, why do we want this second point? Um, and there's a very good reason for it. Because if we just pressurize a pipe, then uh, we have stresses uh, on this line, so somewhere around this corner point, depending on how far we load it, somewhere here. But in an actual piping system, we have additional actual stresses uh, due to weight, which gives uh, actual stresses. There's also thermal expansion that creates additional bending stresses. So there are a lot of additional loads uh, besides the pressure load that creates additional actual stress, but no additional hoop stress. So in actual applications, the, the load condition is more in this area. And this one-to-one -one load condition is a good, good representative for the actual stresses in your pipe. Uh, there are, of course, also parts in your pipe where you have uh, yeah, no high band stresses, so then you're more in this area. But the most critical uh, stress in your system are more around uh, this point. So for the most critical stress, of course, we want to have an accurate allowable. So this point two is a good representative for that. So this this point two is a uh, valuable, bo valuable point to uh, test. So in the current standard of uh, ISO 14692, this is a uh, part of the qualification testing and then used to uh, build the stress envelope. So we have now two points. And now we go to point three, uh, so the third corner point, and uh, well, this one is quite simple to achieve. We have uh, two methods, 
uh, in the first edition of the design standard. Um, so obsolete now, but it may be good for insight to see how we uh, obtain this point. Um, so in the old uh, version of the design standard, it was said, okay, we take uh, the, the short term actual strength. So we put either a complete pipe or a strip of material from the pipe and we put it in a tensile test bench and we uh, put a tension force on it and then we get the actual strength and that is the short term strength so to get the long term strength we again need um, uh, a short term long term ratio and then again we go to the, the pressurized load test huh? so again we go to the um, to corner point one there we have the allowable pressure for uh, 20 years the, the the duration that we aim for and then for the pressurized condition we do another another test but for short duration and so in the order of uh, minutes uh, so the same order of time as for the uh, tensile test bench um, so we pressurize the pipe to high, much higher pressure to or maybe even three times the the long-term pressure and then well in the end it will burst and that gives us the burst uh, test pressure and then the ratio between the long and the short term pressure under this two to one load so pressure wise condition the same ratio we apply to the short term uh, strength and then we get the long term unit actual strength and that's corner point three so that is uh, the third out of five corner points that we need as i said this is from the uh, yet obsolete version of the ISO ISO code. In the current uh, version of the ISO code, it's done in a different way. In the current version of the ISO uh, code, ISO 14692, this uh, test is also compulsory. So in this case, we have test point one, we have test point two. And what we now do in the current version of the ISO, we, we draw a line. Uh, to it, we see it here as a dashed line, and this line it intersects with the vertical axis, and well, that corresponds with a certain value on the vertical axis. It's uh, here with the mouse cursor, and then we multiply this value with a value 0 0.8, and what we find then is the long-term unit axial tensile strength. Uh, so. These uh, points are also the long-term strength points. So from that, we immediately get the long-term strength for this unit actual uh, tensile load condition. So that's corner point uh, three. And uh, yeah, surprisingly for each point, corner point, it gets, uh, uh, the method gets simpler. So we have here uh, unit actual compression and what is done here uh, by the code, it's, it simply says, okay, we before we found the unit axial uh, tensile strength, long term, with the L from long term, we multiply it with 1.25, and then we get the compressive unit axial strength, and that's corner point four. So that is quite, um, yeah, quite straightforward. Um, so then we have corner point four. What we also see is that if you now look to uh, yeah, the stress envelope that we have now, you see that the envelope area for uh, tensile actual um, uh, strength, it's much bigger. It's a much bigger area compared to uh, the compressive actual strength. Um, yeah, so that you might think, okay, then the compressive actual stresses are much more critical but in typical applications, uh, you pressurize the pipe. Uh, so we are on this two to one line. That is uh, our uh, stress due to pressure only. And then if you have the other loads like thermal expansion or weight, we create additional band stresses and they result in a positive axial stress and a negative axial stress. So the positive stress is somewhere here, up, and then of very, Already very soon we get to the top of the envelope and from this uh, line with only pressure stress, if we go down, we see that we have a very large margin. Uh, 
uh, before we read uh, up to here. So this bottom part of the of the stress envelope for actual compressor stress is small, but we are always from purely pressure, we already match up in the stress envelope. So we have a lot of margin to the downside. So this, uh, you could say, okay, this corner point four is not uh, backed up by testing. Uh, it's just a, a formula. Who knows how accurate it is? Uh, it, it is a bit known, of course, about it, but uh, still it's not backed up by testing for each uh, pipe from each manufacturer. But we also see that this part of the stress envelope is less critical. It's uh, simplest because uh, we already have the corner point one here that we saw before. And then corner point five is just uh, straight down from corner point one until we read the, uh, the horizontal axis. And there's corner point five. So now we have found all five corner points. One, two, three, four, and five. Then the stress envelope is drawn to it with the, with the blue lines. And that gives us the stress envelope for the uh, long-term duration, so for design life. Um, and that's then uh, part two of this webinar. In uh, the next part, that is the last part of the webinar, um, we will look to how this stress envelope is applied in season two stress analysis. And in that part, of the webinar, we will also have time to uh, look into questions uh, from all of you which you might have about stress envelope. So part three of the webinar has, um, is a live session. And then the questions that come in via the chat, uh, we will answer. So also if people have questions already now, um, you can type it in the chat and we will look uh, to them and have them available for uh, part three of the webinars. Uh, series. So I hope to see you all in part three of the of the webinar series.